The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cindra Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Lauren Winnewizer, and Lauren is with the Wilderness Youth Project. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you, Cinder. I'm oh, happy to be here. I'm so glad you're here because you've got a big story to tell. You folks are doing all kinds of great things with kids and families in our community. So why don't you tell us about some of the things you're up to these days? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Wilderness Youth Project has been here in the community for over 20 years. Um, you know, we started as a community project and have just grown and grown. Um, these days it's school camps during the school year and summer camps in the summer. Um, and we really have kids getting out there every single weekday of the year, usually. Um, few, few breaks here and there, but um, our programs uh, meet kids where they're at, and oh. we work with kids between ages two and a half all the way up to 18. Two and a half? Two and a half. We have a, a preschool program or an oh, early childhood oh. program um, that's that two and a half to five age group. Um, and we, other than that, the littlest ones, we meet them where they're at with vans, and we go out and explore a new place in nature every week um, with our mentors. So it's a, right. it's a pretty unique program here in town, and they get out everywhere from the San Yanez River, um, places in the front country, up to Gaviota, down to Carpinteria, so really kind of the whole wow. area they get to explore. So tell me what you mean when you say you meet them where they're at. Great question. <laughs> um, so we have meetup locations all over from Carpinteria, Santa Barbara, and Goleta. Uh -huh. um, and those vary from our, we have two kind of two programs, really our paid programs and our free community programs. Um, and so our paid programs meet at places like the Rose Garden, Tucker's Grove, um, at some of the elementary schools oh, in the okay. area, and those are after school and summer. And then we also, during the school year, um, have what we call our Bridge to Nature programs. And those um, serve our community in our schools with some of our community partners. Uh, we partner with Storyteller Children's Center, mm. with the Police Activities League, PAL here in Santa uh -huh. Barbara. Um, and some housing developments as well. And one of the things we found is that we can't always just offer our programs where we want to, we need to go where the kids are. Oh. So those have been a great partnership throughout the community to offer normally after school or school day um, in those locations as well. I see. So I was interested when you said school camp, is that like just an after school program where you take the kids somewhere? Yes, and so we do have after school programs. And then we also have a unique partnership with um, Santa Barbara Unified School District. We're in, I think this coming year, we're gonna be in seven or eight schools again. Um, and we actually get to go out and pick the kids up from school and take them out in oh. the vans in nature. Um, wow, <laughs> so what special. time, like, like for example, what time do you pick them up? Yeah, so for example, um, I got to go out with our Cleveland school group a few times. So we go and we pick them up in the morning first thing around 8.30 or 9, and then we bring them back around 12.30 right before their lunch time. Oh. Um, and so they get a few hours out of school, they come back wet, dirty, having so much fun, exhausted. Um, and the way they do it is we take 12 kids at a time. So oh. we, we take about half the class, and then we swap and take the next half of the class the next week. Oh, the um, next week, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we cycle through, usually there's a few fourth grade classes in every school. So the kids get to go out once a month. So it's usually nine times a year. That's cool. So how many bands do you have? I think we have 14 right now. Holy cow. I believe. Um, oh, wow, that's a lot. Yeah. I mean, in the summertime, we've got over 700 summer camp spots. Oh, so we've got man. the vans are everywhere. It's quite the coordination. That's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so you guys have been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's grown over Absolutely. time, but still. Yeah. 20 yeah. years is a long time. It is, I yeah. Mean, I, I wonder, 
how many people really realize what's going on out there. Yeah, and especially, you know, I think our growth has been somewhat slow, but also exponential if you look over the years. Yeah. Um, I think our, our first gift to the organization was about $20,000 to run the organization, and uh, now we've got a budget of about $2.5 million. So it's definitely become... That is a Got mature 23-year-old organization. <laughs> yeah. So I know you're um, co-development director. So do you get to go out on some of these excursions? Yeah, I actually do. Um, you know, I think typically in another organization, I probably would never get to go out on yeah, the program. Right, right, right. Um, but the way that Wilderness Youth Project works, it's kind of all hands on deck. And it's also one of the best ways for me firsthand to see the work that we're right, doing. Right, right. That's um, smart. Which is how I got to go out with Cleveland. Um, we needed a sub. And so I ended up subbing for a couple weeks to go out on program with them. Um, and I think just some of the most incredible stories came out of that time. You know, with them, we got to go to Parma Park. We got to go out to the San Marcos foothills. Um, we went to Loon Point, which is a mm. beach I'd never been to before. Yeah. Um, and my favorite day, we went out to Elwood Beach on uh, the Bluffs area. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, there's for me, there's an expectation of, like, what happens out there. You know, like, okay, cool. There's these activities. They're planned. Everyone sits in a circle and does everything, and it's all by the book. But... You know, you really show up and nature just provides oh. everything that you could possibly need. And this one day in particular that sticks out to me, um, we've got 12 kids out there and they all start congregating in this one area. And I go over there and the way that the trees were, the trees' roots were kind of sticking out uh -huh. so you could kind of get underneath them. And oh, the kids God. made a roller coaster. Oh, gosh. And there's literally like one kid riding the roller coaster, one kid accepting tickets, one kid talking about the liability of the safety issues in case anything happens. Oh. And another kid like narrating like, tick, 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 tick. okay, you've reached the top. And then when they go down, they're throwing leaves at their face. Oh like these kids gosh. were having so much fun and the joy that was like exuding yeah. out of them. And, and like we as WIP staff, as Wilderness Youth Project staff, aren't doing anything, you know, and there's no expensive equipment involved, no video games, no virtual reality, like just being out in nature and connecting with your peers oh, and man. just that like joy of they're on a roller coaster in the middle of a, of oh, a <laughs> eucalyptus forest. <laughs> that is a fabulous example. I was going to ask yeah. you to give me an example of what you do on the, but obviously you can have some yeah. plans, but nature and the kids kind of absolutely sometimes take over. Yeah. And you know, other things they do out there, our program staff are just incredibly diverse and wonderful and know everything from how to make bowls out of gourds to, you know, making beads out of elderberry stick and teach those kinds of crafts to kids. Um, lots of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a portion about gratitude and gratitude circles, oh. um, which I think is really beautiful and helps yeah. kids um, really, you know, sink into their experiences. Yeah. Oh, lots that's of games. Great. <laughs> I love that. The idea of instilling gratitude in oh the kids. absolutely yeah my son's actually in the in our early childhood program and oh. he's three years old and the first thing he said this morning when he woke up was mama what are you thankful for oh <laughs> that is sweet says that all the time and he definitely got that from wilderness he got project that from because mm -hmm. oh. when you get there you'll say you know here's my name and here's what i'm thankful for today and you know our youngest kids at, at three are doing that our 18 year olds are doing yeah. that and then we as staff too when we start our meetings we try to do that as well what a wonderful sort of practice mm -hmm. and idea, concept that you instill in these kids exactly what they need. Absolutely. Our, you know, one of our, our really quick goals at Wilderness Youth Project are to make kids happy, healthier, and smarter. Oh. Um, and there is so much evidence behind time in nature and connection with nature. Yes, yes. Time with long-term mentors as well um, and things like you know, a gratitude practice as well. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That is just wonderful. So, okay, Wilderness Youth Project uh, is a 501c3. Correct. Nonprofit. Mm -hmm. People can make a, do a tax-deductible donation. Absolutely. By, I'll, I suppose, a lot of ways, but one way would be to visit your website. Yep. And there's probably a Donate Now button. Yep, right in the top corner. <laughs> and so while they're on the website making their donation, um, they could probably also find out about all the programs and are there volunteer opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. You can find out about our, our school year, 
Um, partnerships and programs are summer partnerships and programs. Um, we do have uh, chances for volunteers. We have our CITs, which is ages 14 to 17, um, counselors and training in the summer. Uh -huh. And then we have needs for adult volunteers all year long. So that's on there as well. Um, if you have kids that you want to get involved in nature, we have our blog as well as some parent resources, um, what we call our WIP DIY. So uh -huh. things that we do that you can do yourself with your family. Um, so that's a great spot to check out on our website too. Oh, that's great. And so uh, do you do, like, let's just say somebody wants to volunteer, mm -hmm. but they don't, they feel a little uncomfortable because they're not quite sure what they, if they know how to do whatever it is they're supposed to do. Do you do any kind of training for them? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have training for our volunteers. And then the great thing about our programs, it's, it's 12 kids to three mentors usually. So we've got a four to one ratio. Oh. Um, and so as a volunteer, you'll be there with other mentors who've been there and they get to teach you along the way as well. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And so you definitely need volunteers. You need people absolutely. To Year up. round. And I would imagine you definitely need financial donations. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so you talked a little bit about collaborations, but tell me more about who, you know, I mean, obviously the schools and you said storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. We have, I mean, several organizations that we've worked with over the years. Um, and we're always kind of shifting our partnerships from year to year. Um, Storytellers has been a longstanding partnership of ours and um, they're a, a preschool. And mm -hmm. so we get to take their kids out into nature once a week, which is great. And we have their kids in our summer camps too. Um, we also work with the Police Activities League and their mm -hmm. older kids offering programming to them mm -hmm. and have partnered with camping trips with them in the past and things like that. Um, and then um, we also work with um, Lake Los Carneros mm -hmm. and um, Dahlia Court Housing mm -hmm. and have programs out there in both of those locations. Um, as well as the school district. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anybody. But we're always open to new partnerships. Yeah. We're always working with other organizations in town that do similar work. Um, we have a great program out at El Centro, which is um, one of the community centers. Um, some community center partnerships and housing partnerships came out of the pandemic. Um, in that effort to get to kids where they're at, they weren't at the schools. So oh, we really had to find them in the community. Yeah. And those have persisted since. I was going to ask you about the pandemic and how it affected you and did you, you did, the new word pivot, mm -hmm. uh, did you <laughs> pivot in certain creative ways that maybe some of that you're keeping now or how has that impacted? Yeah, you? I mean, I think being in the community centers and the housing areas, um, those have definitely been pivots that we've continued. Um, luckily in the pandemic itself, um, WIP Wilderness Youth Project was only closed for a couple weeks at the very beginning oh. of 2020. And we did do a online Zoom nature connection, oh, which gosh. Was, seems very silly, but a lot of kids really needed that, that connection to yeah. their mentors and their groups. Um, and, you know, we had a parent who told us that their kid, you know, had been depressed and not leaving their room and not interacting in their Zoom school. Yeah. But when the time came to be with Wilderness Youth Project, they would, that was the one thing they wanted to do, even oh, on man. Zoom, you know? And so having that lifeline and that communication, I think was really important for some kids, um, for all kids probably. Yeah. Um, and then since we're a fully outdoor program, we really haven't had too many restrictions other than things like masks when mask regulations were important. Um, like in our vans, we've had them, we've had limited time in our vans. So sure. it's, it's always shifting. We're still always changing yeah, our COVID yeah. regulations. Well, but good for you. It yeah. sounds like you focus on the, the needs and wants of the kids mm -hmm. and then plan around that, no matter if it's short term, long term. Absolutely. Gosh. So what has, um, so you've been there for about a year. I have. Has anything surprised you or invigorated you during that time? Mm. I think the thing that was most surprising to me I think two pieces. One is, I was like, cool, it's all about nature connection, that's it. But I realized equally important was this mentorship oh. piece um, that I don't think I understood as an outside person. Yeah. I, I thought all they did was nature connection work, getting kids outside. But you know, they've got mentors that have been there for a decade plus and have seen kids year after year. They see kids in the school day program, they see them in the summers. Um, so really just 
people have created really deep, meaningful connections with those mentors. Oh, wow. um, and I've met with some former participants who are in their 20s now who still, you know, by name or member, have a birthday card from their 10th birthday oh. that someone sent them. Oh. You know, so that really deep connection and relationship, I think, is really important at Wilderness Youth Project. And I, I didn't think I knew that from the outside. Yeah. And the second thing is just the incredible dedication to access and to making sure everyone has a chance to attend Wilderness Youth Project. Um, you know, normally I'm sure anybody that has kids in summer, you know, it's like, okay, registration opens at 9 a.m. We got to be the first ones to register so our kid can get in. And yeah. Wilderness Youth Project does a lottery system where everybody puts in their information and then they go through and randomize it. They save spots. They make sure there's balance for race and ethnicity, for gender, wow. spots for disability, and they just really go above and beyond to make sure that we have a diverse segment of people attending our programs and go out of the way to make sure we're finding the people who aren't hearing about us and engaging yeah. with them in the community. That is great. Yeah. So do you think, or have you noticed, are there kids who, um, oh, they've never had this kind of experience before, or maybe, they're kind of older kids and they feel like, you know, they have to act cool because, oh, well, you know, whatever. You know how kids are when they get older. <laughs> yeah. um, but then finally maybe they, you know, get excited about it and want to, I mean, how, have you seen any of that kind of dynamic play? Both. Um, I think one of the first stories that sticks out to me is that we often hear the story that there's children coming to our programs, especially when they're coming through the school day program. Um, that have never been to the beach. So yeah. they go to Franklin Elementary School, they go to Cleveland Elementary School right here, and they've never been to the beach. Um, so we hear that story a lot. Um, and the other story about teenagers, that's absolutely true. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, getting kids out in nature, you really do see like the kids who are too cool to play the games. Or, yeah, yeah. And then it doesn't last very long. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, that's what I was hoping. And, you know, every age group from the littlest ones up through high school, a common phrase we hear is that was the best day ever. Oh. Right? So, you know, it just is. It's being out there, being free, being able to enjoy yourself, being with your peers and others. And... I think Wilderness Youth Project offers something for everyone, whether you like love games and you're competitive or you're really quiet and you want to craft or some days you feel some of both. You know, you just have such a spectrum of things you can do, like a sit spot where all you do is enjoy nature around you. Um, you really great. have a variety of what you can do out on program with us. So you're... Your folks, what do you, do you call, what do you call them, mentors? No, what do you call the staff people? Yeah, program staff or mentors. Okay, so they kind of pay attention to the individual. Let's say you're out, let's say you're over in Carpinteria down there. They pay attention to what, to each individual kid to see maybe this one wants to be quiet, this one wants to jump in the water, you know, that sort of thing. And then they kind of hold the space for that to happen. Yeah, it's incredible. And, and sometimes it's like, this kid wants to do this, this kid wants to do this. But I've been out on program where it's like, this kid's having a really, really hard day oh. and they're crying today. Oh. How do we hold space for this kid as well as the kid that's like super excited? Yeah. And they just do it so beautifully and, and make sure all the kids, they create these spaces that are seemingly like shouldn't all exist together in harmony and they do. Um, and I think one of the things that somebody else pointed out to us, um, one of our funders, that one of the things Wilderness Youth Project does is every day built into the schedule for the program staff a half an hour before and a half an hour after to prep and debrief their day. And in those time periods, you really get a good, you go down the list and you're like, how did John do today? How did Jose do today? Wow. How did, you know, and okay, here's what I think would be really good for them. And then recapping it at the end of the day and talking about like, okay, here's how it went. Here's what could have gone better. What could we do tomorrow or next month when we see these kids again and they take notes so if it is a month between visits in our school day program yeah. they pull up the notes and they go oh, okay oh. okay so here's here's what we had last time here were some issues here were some highlights yeah. and it's so incredibly intentional without it seeming like it in the right, program right, right. yeah wow that is really impressive mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah I bet the, <laughs> the kids really respond to that yeah, without Gee. knowing it, right? They don't yeah. even know that all the background is going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you think that there are programs like this in other communities, or are we just really, really lucky? I think we're really lucky. <laughs> um, I've asked that a lot, and there are other outdoor programs. There's mm -hmm. a lot of outdoor education. Uh -huh. um, but Wilderness Youth Project in particular, there aren't too many other organizations that I think have the, the similar 
um, values and program yeah. style. Clearly, it is built on values. I love the gratitude mm -hmm. thing that you guys do. Yeah. So let's see, we have just a few seconds left. Is there any other message that you'd like the audience to hear? I think just that, um, you know, Nature Connection doesn't have to be like a big, serious camping trip or backpacking. Like just step outside, get to know your oh. neighborhood, get to know the trees on your street, um, you know, find that time and space. While nature is all around us here yeah. in Santa Barbara, I know a lot of people don't have access to it. So, you know, come visit us, find yeah. ways to connect with nature and... Um, we're yeah. just happy to be a part of the Santa Barbara community. Come volunteer. Yeah, come Make join a financial us. contribution Absolutely. so you can do more. Yeah. Oh, Lauren, thank you so much thank for you. all the good work you're doing and for being with us today to tell the story. Of course. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.